let's jump right into Tuesday. Again, another great post from Adam Ahmed, who was sharing with us all of the diagnostic, diagnostic testing. We'd already discussed ultrasound. And there was, so he was talking about that there's a special kind of ultrasound that lets you see the movement of blood flow using dark red and some of the blue colors. And did anybody remember the name of that ultrasound? Yes, what is it? Doppler. It's Doppler. Ding, ding, ding. You are right, Molly. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> what, I know for a second I, I was like, what is it? Doppler. <laughs> like the quarries of my mind. Okay. So as promised for this last week, we were going to continue discussing other modality for diagnostic imaging and monitoring of aortic disease. And computerized tomography. Computerized tomography. That is what CT stands for, computerized tomography. But we're so used to saying CT scan or CAT scan that not many people know that those were the actual two words. And so he included an article from Johns Hopkins that really talks a lot about what the CT scan does. But it's kind of similar to an X-ray in that it produces a cross-sectional image of a body part to help guide doctors through their diagnosis process. But it, they're kind of much more detailed than your just your typical you know, image of your, of your x-ray. It actually allows them to visualize deeper and get into the organs and get into the structures and get into the vessels. So the regular x-ray x -ray kind of sends a beam at one body part at a time. Uh, and the CT kind of moves those beams all around the body. And then now it also uses radiation. But what's interesting about a CT is you can take it with or without contrast. There's your CT donut machine right there. Sometimes the tubes can be a lot longer, but these are typically, they zip you in and zip you out really quickly. Uh, so it can be taken with or without contrast. And contrast can be given either in the IV or you might have to drink it. It's really nasty. Kind of like a really bad pina colada, like not one that you're gonna derive any fun from whatsoever. <laughs> uh, but you know, the IV contrast is kind of bizarre too because it makes you feel all hot in your head and you feel it as it goes down your body and then you feel like you have to go to the bathroom and then it goes away. It's, it's a bizarre sensation. I don't get them anymore because I've had anaphylactic reaction and even when I pre-medicated with Benadryl and prednisone, I did it with what looked like second degree burns all over my body. So I don't get CT scans unless it's life or death, then maybe I would have one done. Uh, but it's so super helpful. It is considered the golden test that people go to to determine if you're having an aortic dissection. Uh, it is so fast, five minutes, you can get your chest, abdomen, pelvic done in, in probably five to seven minutes, just zoop, zoop, and that'll tell you everything that's going on. And I think pretty much what we might be looking at, well, that looks like a baseball that someone swallowed, so I don't really know for sure, but I'm pretty sure uh, this one actually had, yeah, this has got, shows your aortic dissection. Pretty definitive right there. So you have your ascending aneurysm, uh, you have your pulmonary trunk and a descending aortic flap. It's very thin, but there is something going on over there. Don't ask me because this looks like teeth. I have no idea. Okay. I'm much better looking at the, at the MRIs or the MRAs than I am looking at these. But um, you definitely want to talk to your doctor if they're going to order a CT scan. Now, just because we've had dissections doesn't mean you always have to have a CT scan. For some of us, I think I had 12 in my first year. And yeah. there's been major hoopla. Oh my God, like somebody said an X-ray is equal to 86,000 packs of cigarettes or something like that. And I was like, oh, this is so irresponsible. That's why you don't read some of the stuff you see on Facebook. There is a correlation between the radiation that is given off from a cigarette doesn't not even necessarily you smoking it it's just the radiation that's given off of a burning cigarette there's radiation that comes around you all of the time if these ct scans were that dangerous we would not be getting them so there's always a cost benefit analysis that takes place and the reality is is the five minute test that you're having with the CT to potentially save your life and determine if you're having a dissection is worth however many x-rays it's equal to. But you're getting that radiation, holding your phone up, being in front of your microwave, walking around, 
solar flare, it's around you all the time. So it's one of those things that when people say it's like smoking, it's not at all like smoking. Smoking is ingesting into your lungs. You can just be around the smoke and you are, and it's giving off radiation. So you got to just find a place to have the conversation with your doctor and let them educate you that a lot of this is very alarmist and makes me bananas personally. So tell them it makes Karen bananas. <laughs> so don't say that. <clears throat> just explain. I'm a little concerned about the radiation factor. I've heard that blah, blah, blah. And let them explain to you why it is relatively safe. The chances of us dying because we've all of a sudden developed a bizarre cancer from a CT scan to help us determine if we're having a dissection, it doesn't really work like that. So what's most important is if you have any reactions to the contrast. So if you are giving contrast and you feel burning or pins and needles or a million bee stings or itching up your arm, that is worth squeezing the little bulb in the machine because that is signs that you're having some type of allergic reaction, not a side effect. That is an allergic reaction that's happening immediately to the CT and people need to know about that. And in the future, you can be pre-medicated and they just need to watch you for breakthrough like what happened to me. It does not happen to everybody. The majority of people don't have issues with it. And then after you have your test, you want to drink as much fluid as possible to flush the CT dye out of your system. It's very important to try to get rid of that. So did you develop your allergy as time went on or had you always? No. First time I had a CT scan in my life, I was much younger, unrelated to this. I just said to them while I was in there, I feel like I have a million bees stinging my arm. And they pulled me right out and gave me some prednisone right away. And they said, you are officially allergic to CT dye. And I've never forgotten that. And so you, but you've had CT since with the yeah. allergies just so, pre-medicated for it. Oh. Yeah, I used to take a lot of Benadryl, a lot especially if they give it to me in the IV, like if you're in the ER, oof, you're like, well, put you right out yeah. uh, and, and prednisone. So you're right out with your eyeballs wide open. <laughs> like, should I be buzzed or should I be asleep? And that would work. So yeah. there's Omnipake and Vizipake. Those are the two that I'm aware of that are the contrast. Vizipake, Omnipake. I cannot remember which one I had that gave me the breakthrough even though I was pre-medicated, but it was definitely a different medication than I had ever had before in my life, but they're in the same family. And once I had that breakthrough, they said, I am so highly likely uh, to have another breakthrough. And I have pictures and it was painful. It was like second degree burns with blisters, torso, front and back. Okay. So um, yeah. So if I can handle it, they would do an echo on me and if I could have the MRI and they'll just be watching as it's because your MRI can take 45 minutes mm, yeah. compared to a five minute CT. It's all okay. um, yeah. you know, but for me, an echo gadolidium is not the same as IV contrast with CT. So if you're allergic to CT, it does not mean you're allergic to gadolidium with an MRI. So these are all really important conversations to have with your doctor because I am not a doctor. I'm just sharing with you what happened to me. You're kind uh, of disclaimer. Like fun with all these big words. And busy peak and omni peak. <laughs> and gadolinium or whatever. Gadolinium. Gadolinium. Yes. You know, I found it interesting recently. I went to a um, cardiologist, uh, sent me to a new cardiothoracic surgeon that's local. I have one up in San Francisco, Stanford. However, I went in there and he was uh, mentioning to me that he thought you know, I, I was looking so good and um, that perhaps I could, because of that, I was probably going to live a very long life is what he was saying. I'm paraphrasing. And he said, that being said, you may want to think about having less CT. So instead of one every year, maybe go every couple of years or something. And, and, um, I thought that was very, you know, very positive thought on his part that you know, why radiator if she's going to live to 90. Uh, anyway, I took that back to the cardiologist and um, he, he said, yeah, we could do that. However, I'm only two years out. And I and I said, great, maybe down the road. But in, in these years coming up, I don't want to go much longer than a year. You know, to me, that's my safety net. I I want to know as soon as possible if something's changing. But yeah. I found that interesting that, um, yeah, that he was willing to go, you know, every other year, every three years even. Which is great. If the only reason was because they don't want to radiate you, I would then counter and say, 
well, can I maybe switch to an MRA right. and do the, the, you know, do the MRI machine versus the CT. So then I, you know, don't have the radiation, but at least I'm having the thorough test. I, I believe that was the, uh, the alternative was an yeah. MRI cardiac. Is that what a cardiac MRI is? A cardiac MRI, MRI is different okay. than the MRAs because the cardiac MRI, I believe actually shows heart and valves in motion. I just had my first one recently because of my valve is failing. And so now I have a echo and then six months later, I have cardiac MRI and six months later, I have an echo. So I'm getting two tests within a, a year, basically, uh, four tests in a sense, um, each one every six months. And the cardiac, this was different. This showed like heart movement function. It was very different. Uh, I think I'll be going and getting those from now on. So yeah, but so MRIs don't bother me. It's the cardiac was difficult. Cause <laughs> so a lot of holding your breath and holding it would felt like I was going to die, <laughs> holding it for eternity. Well, it, then, would, it is a long one. It's like 45 yeah. minutes to an hour and that breath holding. The first one I had, they said, um, I heard the machine say, um, exhale mm -hmm. and hold. And I was exhaling with no oxygen in me for, you know, 10, 11, 12 seconds. And, you know, after 45 minutes of that, I was getting panicky. It was very awful. And mm -hmm. I, I came out of there. I'm like, what in the heck? And, and he's like, well, they, they just take a long time. I'm like, yeah, but I couldn't hold my breath. Well, it turns out the MRI was uh, inconclusive because there was too much movement. Cause I was going, you know, I could, yeah. The next one I had, I heard it right. You know, inhale and hold. I mean, that and makes hold. sense. Yeah. But even with that machine, once it tells you to exhale and the next thing you know, it's like, take a breath in and hold. I'm like, wait a minute. I didn't even get a chance to just breathe. So the cardiac is a little bit more intense, I think, than a regular MRI. And quite honestly, those MRIs, I'm usually, I fall asleep so easily. They put the spa music in with those earplugs and I listen to that. And then I start counting them and putting together patterns. And then I wake up <laughs> every single time I start Okay, let's get settled. It's like Pavlov's dog. I know I'm settled in. I got my little thing to squeeze. And they're like, everything good? I'm like, yep, night. <laughs> you go right out. I, I, yeah, I mean, CTs are great because they're so quick, but they're so, you know, you're exposing yourself more than day in and day out radiation. So it, it, it all comes down to talk to your doctor, just like you had this conversation. I remember one time mine said to wait two years and I was like, hell no. Like I, I can never psychologically go that long yeah. without knowing if there's been a change. And of course they listened to me and there was a change, but separate from that, you should, you know, these are all about having conversations with your doctor. It's really important. Yeah. Okay. Topic Tuesday.